rescue off, save the dinosaurs from an island that's about to explode. What could go wrong? Welcome to Fallen Kingdom, we'll return to Jurassic World one minute at a time. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And here we are back to take a little look at uh, Minute 41 of Fallen Kingdom. Before we get to that, David, Jurassic-pedia.com, uh, we don't just have the presence, that the uh, the website, we've also got a presence. Uh, we have talked briefly before about uh, the Facebook group um, and uh, its, its uh, workings and teaming up with Behind the Gates as well to uh, post up. Uh, some of the rarer and not so much seen images uh, that mm-hmm. exist out of the franchise behind the scenes, that sort of thing. Uh, today we're going to take a look. Uh, this is a, unfortunately an old article from mid-March when uh, we had already recorded this episode and we had a cat- catastrophic uh, record failure. But because of that early record, uh, I realised that you, in fact, had these photos of the uh, the miniatures used um, for the Explorer drop sequence and the the uh, end of the T Rex breakout. You actually had these on your hard drives and uh, didn't realise that they hadn't been shared before. But uh, now they're on Facebook, and uh, I never knew this scene, this sequence was miniatures, but it, it looks fantastic. Yeah, a lot of people didn't realise this was done with a miniature effect. It's one of the few miniature effects that have been done in these movies, including the, um, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The SS Venture crashing into the dock was a miniature. And then in Jurassic Park 3, they had the plane crashing through the trees. They just had a model plane basically just thrown across on a zip line and just took a bunch of footage of it as it smashed through a bunch of potted trees. Hmm. And so this one's a bit, a bit crude. It's, it's not very complex it didn't really need to be it's just a kind of a fake jungle and a smashed up model explorer that um somebody obviously they must have filmed it a couple of times just chucking it into the into the tree until they got it right i'm sure and, all and that turned out so right at the end just you you feel yeah. that impact and just the way the model interacts with the tree it just it looks so real it does yes and it's just funny because, like you said, I just had these on my hard drive. I didn't realize that you hadn't been shared before. And I was going through something else. I was looking for something else. And then, oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I was talking with the person who owns the um, original negatives. He had bought the negatives at auction and um, had a couple of them developed. And this, these photos were among them. And they're just really cool behind the scene photos they have a bunch of they have a couple photos of the painting of the maquettes i think we had those already though but yeah they were the original negatives to these photos and it's cool because i posted them online and and everybody's like wow i had no idea that was a miniature i'm like yeah i mean how else do you i have a controlled crash of a vehicle into a tree (laughs) It makes sense. It's yeah, you're. Uh, I think that's the, the the great thing about special effects when they're done so well. You just can't tell. Uh, there's still there's still so much stuff in that original Jurassic Park movie that blends so well. Uh, you, you it's hard to believe how few special effects and CG shots are actually in the film. Uh, it, because it was popular at the time, I'm very surprised there was nothing. With the trailers going over the cliff that was miniature either just they actually went out and said right yeah we're building this false false cliff wall in the studio and we're going to have this massive full-size rv roll and uh, be pushed off the cliff and mm-hmm. suspended off that car park it, it still boggles the mind yet yes of course how are you going to drop a car off a concrete moat into a treetop <laughs> that uh, is yeah. going to look realistic and Say the same for the uh, the aircraft crash in Jurassic Park 3 too. You, you can't physically mm-hmm. crash an aircraft, although um, some directors nowadays, Tom Cruise might have a go at actually crashing <laughs> an aircraft Crashing into some trees. Yes, well, <laughs> take his license away, damn it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, these photos are up um, courtesy from behind the gates and uh, Jurassic Dashpedia on, uh, on Facebook. Blue is alive. 
Jesus, Claire. You raised her, Owen. You, you spent years of your life working with her. You're just gonna let her die? Well, yeah. All right, Dave, ready to get into minute 41. Yeah. All right, minute 41 of Fallen King opens with Claire and Franklin climbing a ladder and ends with the volcano, volcano continuing to spew lava. Uh, last minute, Claire had finally discovered the ladder leading to the roof hatch. Uh, unsure why it took her so long since she'd been looking around for a way out for some time. But uh, as we continue in the minute 41, Claire tries to open the hatch and below Franklin excitedly yells, we made it, <laughs> yeah, go us. Before comedically the uh, the ladder dislodges and uh, Franklin rides it all the way back down to the bunker floor. <laughs> Good little bit of comedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course, of course, you sing your tune too too soon when you think you've escaped, <laughs> and uh, no, karma's going to put you straight back down into danger. In the bunker, the Baroness is going uh, has found a way through the curtain of lava and sees Franklin standing at the bottom of the ladder. The animal roars and charges. Franklin screams and starts climbing the ladder again and. Uh, because the Baronics has seen him, it follows him up the tube. And we haven't had sort of, even though the Baronics isn't a person-sized animal, it can still sort of go into person-sized holes. And the fact mm-hmm. that it sort of starts following him up the pipe here, it's sort of, you'd expect the same thing from a lost raptor or a Dilophosaurus or any of those small carnivores as well. And um, Well, it also I, has that long snout and the neck that can get it up into those spot, uh, spaces as well. So that does help. Yeah. It's a very kind of lith dinosaur, you know. It's not, it's not a big bruiser, bulky dinosaur like T. Rex or even um, like kind of Taurus to an extent. It's kind of a bulkier dinosaur for a theropod anyway. But Baryonyx being a spinosaur, they're very thin uh, animals. Which just makes me wonder even more how they're gonna incorporate it as the big bad for Jurassic Park 3 if they're going to use the baryonics unless it was going to be some sort of uh, mutation <laughs> to make it as big as what the Spinosaur was because you need it to be as big as the T-Rex. You need mm-hmm. it. I'm sure even if it was the baryonics, there still would have been that T-Rex fight. They they knew they yeah. wanted, wanted a big new big bad over the T-Rex, so it can only be, it can only be some sort of mutant or they just take some liberties with it like they did the Spinosaur and make it a bit bigger and not so not so mm-hmm. accurate. Yeah, this one I think they probably would have done is just supersized it. Mm. But uh, Barrox follows Frank up the base of the ladder and uh, snaps at his legs and gripping his pants. Uh, Claire finally gets the hatch open and they start to climb out um, and the animal's right there still on Franklin's heels. And we get our shot outside the bunk here. There's lava's flowing all around the concrete roof. Um, Unfortunately, we seem to have time warped into a different location. <laughs> not the uh, not the, uh, the exterior bunker we seen earlier when we entered the facility. Uh, radio tower's gone, nowhere to be seen. Uh, it almost seems like they have travelled uh, through the tunnels a little bit, and this is just a exit hatch in Jurassic Valley. It does Valley. seem that way. When you think about it, it's the uh, lo- the geography of the scene is weird because, like you said, I mean that external infrastructure is just suddenly gone and if you think of how where they should have come up they should be like right there at the base of that uh, radio tower coming out of the roof of the bunker but Mm. they're not yeah and especially if what we get we do get um mentioned in the novel later on i'm not sure if it's this minute or next minute that they have moved into gyrosphere valley um at this point where this hatch is so it, all, it almost seems like they should have should have got around behind the Baryonyx and ran down that tunnel a little bit and just found an exit hatch and got out here. Because um, there's no 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 turnarounds for vehicles. We know Wheatley and Crew only took the one the one armored vehicle on the truck. There should still be an armored vehicle here, uh, unless that the well, last the crew. The other guys. Yeah, yeah fled, they would have. Yeah, they would have taken. They would have taken the other one. Yeah. Yep. But no turnaround here. <laughs> well, no, that no, no Brachiosaurus skeleton either. Uh, that, no, there was kind of a, almost something that was, was, in a way, kind of deleted. Was there's this big bleached? Uh, I think it was li- uh, full life size skeleton of from a Brachiosaurus, the bones bleached white, and um, it was pretty much completely cut. I think you can kind of see the shadow of it around in the background in some of the shots, but for all intents and purposes, it's no longer there. 
Mm. They could have, what they could have done instead is kind of given us just like a quick focus shot on it. I mean, it doesn't really need to be a, like a big, like a big thing, but like during an establishing shot during the scene, they could have like maybe panned the camera up from it or something. So just a way to include it, you know? Yeah, or it could have been something else that melted away into the lava as it's sort of spewing down the valley. Mm -hmm. Um, Instead of the um, Corthosaurus. mm, Yep, yep. Um, Yeah, because anyone that was following Real Real Tools Hawaii when Fallen King was being shot, there's... A lot of people were taking photos of that, that brachiosaur skeleton laying mm-hmm. lying near this near this bunker. It was actually it was right below this this bunker hatch where they filmed, but it's just completely taken out of out of the film, um, which is which is a shame. Uh, Franklin uh, helps Claire close the hatch on the Baroness's head, uh, sealing the fate of the animal. Uh, they 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 went there to try and save. All 15 species, but this uh, particular baryonyx is uh, not going to be saved today. It's going back into the lava-filled bunker. Um, poor carnivores. No one wants to save them, although we do get the Tyrannosaur saved later on. And, uh, yeah. Supposedly... Well, I think we see a baryonyx being held um, in a netting from a helicopter, too. Mm. Interestingly, they're alive. They're not alive, but... Untranquilized. I'm pretty sure its tail's moving and it's roaring as it's being carried. Yeah, it was. We'll, <laughs> we'll get to that in a couple of minutes' time. Franklin looks up in fear. Claire turns and drops a pretty stern uh, holy. And PG, of course, blanks out the shit word. Um, <laughs> thank you, Universal. <laughs> and we look up to see another outburst from rock and ash from the volcano. Uh, we get a bit of an aerial shot of it as uh, lava is continuing to spew from the top. And... Um, it's getting ready to go. It's It's been doing this for a few minutes now, so we get a large lava bomb fly through the air. Um, I almost wish it was making the whistling sound like it does in the cartoons, and, and that is it's flying through the air. <laughs> Boom, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as the minute ends, it impacts the ground down the valley, as uh, Franklin and Claire look. At each other and look at look on in fear and we do get a little bit of a ground reverberation that sound that impact of it hitting the ground here uh these things get ejected kilometers mm-hmm. into the air uh we're going to talk about it in a couple of minutes time when when the volcano does erupt and these magda bombs are just impacting the ground either side of the gyrosphere or hitting animals and it's just brushing them off <laughs> Uh, and we see the big ones here but they can range greatly in size from just kind of like golf ball sized tiny death missiles to like minivan sized crushing missiles <laughs> yeah yeah and i know we normally go to twister and that so i know not uh, twister uh, volcano or dante's peak but got to bring in the other big boy here the uh the 2012 and they just it just chucks a side of a mountain that uh woody harrelson stand on that <laughs> on that mm-hmm. mountain peak even though it's a bit exaggerated a bit bigger than what well, maybe not a bit bigger mm-hmm. than what we're seeing here anyway yeah. Well, a lot of times these kind of uh, volcanic eruptions can be inherently violent. They're, when we see in Dominion, uh, when they're going through the montage of video at the beginning, that the whole kind of cone, the top cone of this, is kind of just gone. Mm. And that's what kind of what we see happening here is the sides of the mountain are crumbling from the force of the magma being forced up around it. And um, I remember uh, I watched uh, last weekend the movie Pompeii. It's not at all historically accurate. They show <laughs> the amphitheater being crushed by the during the eruption, and it's like you can go visit this. I mean, I could understand if it was some kind of uh, lost structure like the Library of Alexandria, but you can literally go visit this today. You can go visit the amphitheater, and you can see it's clearly not crushed. <laughs> but anyway, tangent over. But the volcano itself, Vesuvius, it's now it's actually two separate mounts. There's Vesuvius and then there's Senna or Semna or something like that. It was originally one mountain that was like 10 times its current height. And it just kind of gives you the idea of how violent and shattering these eruptions can be. I. I seem to remember 
it being said somewhere, and I don't know if this is accurate at all, but um, some of the moon rocks brought back were actually volcanic rocks from Earth that had been ejected into space from an eruption and just eventually had made it to the moon. I've never heard that. I do yeah, know that, that the moon had volcanic origins in and of itself. Yeah. I think the leading theory is that a large object knocked a chunk of the planet off during his still semi-liquid state, and the moon formed from those semi-liquid fragments that were ejected. And so that's, and so when that cooled, there was like lava fields on the moon that. Mm eventually cooled and i think that's actually the darker pigmentations that we see when we look up the moon oh, okay yes we are insignificant specks in this universe <laughs> 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 oh we're in the change of tangent there um looking at novel comparisons quickly uh claire and franklin catch their breath and uh looked around to realize they're now standing in the middle of the dryosphere valley so a bit of an acknowledgement there that they have moved location but not really explaining how Although in the novel, it is described as a fairly long corridor from those front doors they open up to get into the bunker to where they're actually at the uh, computer terminal. In the movie, you can clearly see it's all one set, all one room, but uh, in the novel, yeah. it does it does say that it's a long, longer corridor that uh, leads. I mean, like the... there's kind of that entryway and then there's some then you walk into the main room, but there's. Nothing really in the scene that may even remotely looks like there's a tunnel going into this radio bunker. Mm, yep. Besides the one that goes out of it, that the baryonyx comes down. <laughs> yeah, and it would explain uh, next minute when we do get down the hill a little bit and we start finding some abandoned gyrospheres and that. Uh, it would explain why we're no longer near the bunker, but... Um... Yeah, which also weird because we get Owen at the start next minute running back Oh, he, surely he'd be running back to the bunker, but it, he comes out exactly where they are, so they can't be too far away. I'm, I'm imagining that radio tower is just off the, off to the side of the screen somewhere, because uh, mm -hmm. we I don't think we see. There is one angle we don't see. I'm, I'm thinking it's over there, but just a little nitpick there. But uh, Dave, that's minute forty-one. Uh, I think we've covered that pretty good. How about we get out for the week, mm -hmm. and we're back next week with another minute. All right, sounds good.